Ready? Okay. Then we'll get going. Last, last talk of the day for uh, operations. Um, hi, my name is uh, Kirk Kirkconnell. Uh, I am a senior solutions engineer here at Couchbase. Uh, my background is almost entirely in operations for my career. i um, done a lot of disaster recovery planning. Um, so what I'm going to start out with is talking about some of the foundations of uh, high availability and disaster recovery, some of the things that I see in the field that people just totally forget when it comes to Couchbase. Um, some of the, the, the foundations of these things, people think that, oh, it's no, no SQL, it's new, it's shiny. And you know, it's, it's really not. It's still the same kind of stuff that we've been dealing with as operations people for a, lo a long time. Same kind of things still matter. Um, and so I'm going to cover that really, 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 really briefly because some people like to forget it. So jump into that real fast. Um, the high availability, everyone says, oh, I need zero downtime. I can't lose any data, oh my god. Um, and so it also comes with administration and maintenance too. Um, but uh, also comes to data redundancy, failover, um, all the things you see listed up there, I'm not going to read them off. So um, people really need to understand, and if, you, if you've been doing operations for a while, you know that a lot of people don't seem to understand this, especially in management. What does never go down and never lose data actually mean? People don't really understand the ramifications of this for some reason. I talk to people all the time. People have been doing this for lots of years and don't get it. And you really need to write what, I mean, cut down in writing, what is your recovery time objective and what is your recovery point objective? How, much, how, how long can you be down and how much data are you allowed to, lo allowed to lose? And that's true for Couchbase or anything else, but I actually wanted to cover that really fast. Um, obviously get management to sign off on this. This is what's going to drive your whole Couchbase solution, whether you use replication, whether you use uh, in intercluster replication, how many availability zones are you going to run in, how many uh, racks do you have, whatever the thing is, all are driven off these kinds of numbers. Um, and the other thing I wanted to dispel real fast is that people think with XDCR and Couchbase that that is disaster recovery. XDCR is not disaster recovery. It is part of a disaster recovery plan. Uh, disaster recovery, as like I said, everybody who's been seasoned at this and doing lots of DR stuff, is a layered approach. Um, make sure that you have a plan, make sure you test it, um, and uh, make sure that, that the features that you're using in Couchbase are the uh, 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 ones that support your RPO and your RTO. And write, write it and test your, your plans. So enough of my philosophizing and saying all the stuff that people don't do. Um, we're <laughs> we're going to jump right into um, high availability. So we've talked before, um, you've probably heard a couple different different times here, you've seen it, and if you've been playing around with Couchbase, of the intra-cluster replication. Um, make sure that you're, you're probably doing at least one uh, uh, replica. Um, make sure, then you want to make sure that, the, that there's a copy of the data somewhere. If there's a temptation by a lot of people to do more replicas, hey, more replicas means I can do more things, I can lose more nodes if I can recover this. And that's true, but there's performance trade-offs for that. So that's the other thing you got to think about here is most people, if you're using 10 nodes or less, really trying to stick to doing like one replica. Um, and, and, but the, 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 when the number starts going up of how many nodes you have, that's when you might start getting more concurrent failures um, and seeing more nodes fail at the same time. Um, yes, you can do up to three replicas or four total copies of your database. Um, but really, it's, it's more when you get up to the, the 20 node level or higher than that that you see people actually start using that. Um, just because of the performance trade-offs. I mean, yes, you can lose more nodes. You should add a, another replica. Um, I mean, so what's free node you can use, you have to add another replica. But if you have three servers and you have three, I mean, two extra copies of your data, that starts being a really performance drain on, on some of this stuff. So one of the other features I wanted to talk about um, that not enough people use is the rack zone awareness. Um, this is an, an enterprise-only feature. Um, but what it really lets you do is, is separate out uh, your data, the replicas of where they are. If you have, let's say, three racks, or you're running in three zones in AWS, for example, you can have uh, enough replicas where you can lose an entire zone um, from a region. We actually have had a customer where they lost, uh, uh, where Amazon just kind of said, oh my god, we found a bug, we have to reboot uh, everything in your zone. Poof the zone went away. And I don't know about you, but that's the kind of stuff that makes me scared. Um, so uh, I don't like getting up at 2 o'clock in the mornings and stuff like that. So, uh, uh, but it happened. And 
they were able to rebalance their cluster. Um, they have an 80 node, they have four 80 node clusters. This has only happened in one of them that I'm aware of. Uh, but they rebalanced uh, and uh, everything was fine because in rack zone awareness, what it does is the data that is active in one uh, zone or one rack, and in, in the, you'll see it in server groups is what it's called inside of uh, Couchbase. Um, all of the replication data for, the, for that will always be kept in one of the other server groups, or in this case, another zone. Um, you have to manually define these. That's kind of one of the downsides. There's no way to, in Couchbase, to automate it. You could do that in, with the REST API or the CLI. Um, but uh, uh, this way, like I said, you can lose an entire rack worth of servers uh, out of the cluster um, or an entire availability zone and still be whole. Um, that's kind of a, a key thing and not enough people really use this. It's also the same goes for VM hosts. If you're using VMware, um, it, it's, uh, uh, it's best to try and stick um, your server groups to how many VM uh, uh, nodes that you, I mean VM hosts that you have your, your guests on, so. Uh, let's see here, application considerations. So there's also lots of things you can do in your application that can promote high availability uh, with, with Couchbase. Um, so the first one that I see for a lot, you wouldn't think is high availability, but make sure that the application developers are actually putting uh, the, the connection strings of at least three of the nodes of your cluster in, into, the, in, into their connection string when they, when they, when they call it. Because if they only put one, and that's the node that you just took out for maintenance, and they bootstrap an application, they bring it up, or something happens, well then it can't get the cluster map. And if you have more, I mean, in that connection string, it's gonna try the other, other nodes to get that, connect, that connection string. When an, when an application server boots up with the SDK, first thing it has to do is go get to the cluster and say, give me the map of the cluster. It goes through that connection string to do it. I see this all the time. People forget to put in that, those multiple things. Again, high availability, sort of, but it's your bootstrapping in the, the, the application, that's really important. Um, so the next one is when you get into to replicate too. These are sort of, like I said, application level things, which for some operations people don't matter, but you're gonna get the call if things don't go right. So this is why I'm telling you to make sure that you, you beat up on the developers um, to use them. So RPO can dictate um, the use of, of replicate too. So Re replicate too is a code level uh, 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 call that in the SDK that says, hey, replicate this data. Once you, I mean, you write it into the, to the node that I'm going to, into the V, into the, the v bucket, the, prime, the uh, um, active V bucket, but also replicate it to one of the nodes. And if it doesn't replicate, don't return okay to me. I, I wanna make sure that's always replicated so that if, you, if I do lose a node, I know it's replicated to one of the other ones. There's not a whole, there's not as high of a cost as let's say is like a persist to, that's one of the other, the sister call here, which is persisting down to disk. But replicate to um, is make sure the data is on another node. Um, and I say this, so the RPO is how much data can I lose? I mean, there, there is a micro fraction hair of a second that, that something in, in Couchbase with the, in the cache, depending on if you have not been watching your, your statistics and your queue depth has gotten really long, which I highly recommend you don't let that happen. But, um, that you want that data on, on the one of the other nodes. So that would be one thing to make sure that your, uh, uh, your application developers are using depending on what your recovery point objective is. Another one uh, is replica reads. You can do in, in Couchbase and the SDKs where, uh, you know what, something's happened and no, the node I'm trying to read off of is not available. Um, what you can do in, in the code is say, okay, I'm gonna read from one of the replicas. I don't, all, I don't wanna do this by default. This is not how I would scale reads, but in a, a situa situation where high availability matters and I can't afford to not return data to, to the application, do a replica read. That's the kind of situation that you'd wanna do that. Writes are a little bit of a sticky point though. Um, you only can write to the active V bucket. So there's a couple more it's a little bit more complicated in order to do this. You have to a little bit more finagling. Um, some people I've seen where they want to write to a message queue, um, and then that will hold into the message queue temporarily until that active node comes back up. When you're, when you're using, in, in Couchbase, if you have, uh, um, with auto failover or a node goes down in, in, in that situation, auto failover is turned on, 
there's going to be a time period where uh, that node is unavailable, where those are active. Even in the best case scenario, there's still going to be uh, a 30 second window where that, app, that one node of the cluster is going to be unavailable. Um, what do you do during that? Again, you have to plan for high availability, plan for disaster recovery. What some people do is write to a message queue in those situations, um, or if they have cross data center replication uh, active, they will write that to the other cluster knowing that that will come back through XDCR. It'll be replicated back through. That's, I mean, sort of another trick that I've seen people do is they, they have to have the right, if it doesn't, the cluster doesn't re reply back in X milliseconds, they will go to that other cluster and do something there knowing that the right will come back. That, that right obviously will be eventually consistent because of XDCR, but they'll at least be able to capture that right. Um, we talked a little bit before about this with how many replicas. Um, so I'm not gonna, gonna go through it. I kind of skipped, skipped this over a little bit. Um, Inter-cluster high availability. Um, so this gets into with XDCR. Um, if you're not familiar with XDCR, I'll go over it really, really fast. It's super simple. If you have multiple data centers, or even some people do use it inside the data center um, to be able to have multiple copies. It's incredibly simple to set up. You give it the reference of another cluster. Um, and so, well, let me just back up real quick. It's two clusters or more. You can have, I mean, n number of clusters. And inside of Couchbase, you can tell it to replicate data as soon as it comes in here, right out of memory, push it over to the other cluster. Um, it's super simple to set up. If you are running, let's say, in AWS in two different regions, um, I mean, it will make sense depending on your RPO and your RTO of what you want to set that up or not. Um, and just watch out for some of the, uh, and I think I talk about it here in a little bit, um, is the uh, uh, conflict resolution, um, but that's a different issue. So XDCR can be part of a disaster recovery strategy. Again, people always think, oh, I'll just set up XDCR and life will be good. Well, yes, but it's, it's replicating everything. If you do a delete on this one, it's gonna delete it on the other one. If you, I mean, change it here, it's going to change it over on the other one. So that's not, just because you do that doesn't mean you're gonna have all of your data. If for some reason the application goes nuts and starts deleting things or someone drops a bucket, well, you still need other options here. So again, it's part of a disaster recovery plan. It's not the whole thing. Um, uh, some people do it where there's a, a hot and warm standby um, in, in between uh, regions or even inside the same uh, data center. They want to be able to have a second copy of it inside the data center maybe for um, uh, just so they have an extra copy somewhere close by. Um, one of the really cool tools when I was investigating this, I mean, I always learn new things about Couchbase even though I work for the company. Um, there's a tool called CB Recover that if something happens to one of the clusters, you can use it to pull the data from the second cluster. I had never actually heard of this tool until about three weeks ago. It's been in the product for years, but um, it's, it's funny. I, like I, said, I learn new things all the time. But you can reconstruct this other cluster based off of your, 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 XDC, your other XDCR cluster in, in there. It's actually a really cool tool. Um, so let's say you have one server goes down and it goes up into a fiery flames and for some reason you have turned off uh, uh, replicas, you could still get that data back. Um, again, what you do depends on your RTO and RPO. Um, for a little bit, schema design can matter. Um, so again, this dips into the application and not so much operations piece, but I wanted to mention it. Um, uh, and I've been told I shouldn't be using the word normalizing, um, but whatever. Um, that one carries a lot of baggage there. But normalizing the, the, the object model in, in, in Couchbase, um, one of the things to really think about is, is that you, if you have lots of smaller documents, well, that's what's shooting over an XDCR. You're not editing, uh, say, a monolithic document, whether it be 2K, 7K, multiple megabytes. Um, sometimes your schema changes can matter to how much data is being pushed over. And if you're doing lots of updates on only small fractions of data, again, high availability, how consistent do, your, do, do these data centers need to be between the two of each other? Um, so again, something you want to bug the developers about, about how they're designing the object model um, in the database that you're managing um, is, is, can, can have a real, uh, a real impact on that. Um, the other thing is, is cross data center replication is by bucket, so that you can say this bucket is replicated and this other bucket is not. 
Um, I, ha I have talked to one, one person um, who's been using uh, uh, Couchbase for many, many years, and they have localized data. So some of the data about configurations of the different clusters, they have 13 locations, and they have a ring structure where they use XDCR to move all of the data copied all around of it. But then there's some data that's always local, and they don't replicate it. It's only for that data center that, it, that, it, that is managing the, the, uh, the servers locally that held all that information. It's not replicated all the way around. So you can pick and choose how you do this. Um, it's actually pretty powerful. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, this is that, that I was talking before about CB Recover. I kicked in another slide here, and I forgot that I mentioned above earlier. But, um, there's the URL if you want to get some more information about that CB recovery tool. It's actually, like I said, it, it's a really, um, really kind of nice. So when, if you're in a bind and you actually have XDCR, um, there are times where things don't work correctly and you might need it. So just have another, another uh, uh, thing in your back pocket. Um, so another thing you can do with, with, uh, with application logic and cross data center replication, um, again, depends on your RTO and RPO and how much money you have is uh, having a global load balancer and uh, having an, an application pointing to the uh, couch-based data center that's in each data center. Um, and so that you would have the application and couch base here, and cap application and couch base here, global load balanced, something happens to an entire data center, an entire region, everything still goes over there. Very common. XDCR in between the two of them. We have some of our largest customers using this. Again, watch your, uh, 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 what you call it, the conflict resolution. Make sure that works with your use case. Um, but it works really well, and, and uh, the data, I mean, pushes back between the two. So um, the other thing that I've seen people do is have application, local application timeouts, um, where I was talking a little bit before about Checking the, checking the database. If you're not getting back the information that you need in a certain amount of time, there's one of them that I've, one customer we have that I've heard uh, talked about where they, if they can't get within five milliseconds of, uh, uh, if they can't get the information out of Couchbase, they go to one of the other data centers to get it, the application does, which is a very tight window in my opinion, but again, depends on your RTO and your RPO. Um, uh, Let's see here. So um, the other thing that people don't really think about is high availability that's during upgrades and patches. I mean, um, the, the people think about, oh, well, I can just kind of, I mean, upgrade things and remove servers and not worry about high availability. It, it's people think that, that, I mean, under normal circumstances, everything's going to run great. And it does most times. Um, but when you start removing things, uh, that, that's when you're, you may not have enough capacity at that time. I mean, it's one of the best ways to, to do upgrades is to uh, either remove a node uh, and upgrade it and then do swap rebalances to get it to, I mean, to go in. Um, even better is if you can actually have a spare node and swap that in first, um, and then you always keep your capacity. Um, that's a, 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 a big problem I've seen of people who end up um, not planning out and if they have an enterprise, an enterprise agreement, um, you can actually get support or someone like myself to help you with, uh, uh, with some of the upgrades or help plan the upgrades um, to keep your application up during it. That's probably when I see most of, uh, 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 most of the problems with upgrades is uh, um, not having enough capacity to actually continue to run um, when you are, are, are doing this. Um, so the, I want to talk about real fast was the multi data center consistency. I mean, when you are using XDCR, um, you really need to monitor the the replication queues uh, to to see um, what's happening. Um, you can see here this one actually is pretty low. There's the number of items that are remaining to be replicated. Um, this is one that you're going to want to monitor on a on a regular basis. Um, if you want to, if multi data multi data center consistency is a uh, uh, is a problem with you, some people end up doing dual writes. Um, to, to, to different data centers even. Um, it really just depends. Um, again, it depends on what you're, what, what you're trying to do, so. Um, wow, I'm going really fast. Only 19 <laughs> minutes in. Well, we're gonna get out of here early. Okay, uh, backups. Um, so when it comes to backups, uh, if, from what I've seen, 
Um, backups are important, but uh, even, with, even with other databases I've ever worked on, um, backups should not necessarily be your first line of defense for, uh, for a, a DR strategy. Um, it depends on the size of your database. It's gonna depend on a lot of things. Um, I've seen a lot of databases that are really big and restore times are gonna be hours. And I know I keep saying RTO and RPO, and I'm sorry, but if you're, um, and you're probably, we can have a drinking game. But anyways, uh, uh, it really matters. I mean, the sense of if, if your recovery time that, you're, that someone says is can only be four hours, but your restore is gonna take five, well, then backups, aren't gonna, backups and restores aren't gonna be what you want. Um, you're gonna have to solve it a different way with XDCR and, and a couple other things. So uh, that, that's kind of the, the, one of the main things I wanna talk about is, is that backups are important. Um, I'll talk about some of the strategies of how to back up here in, in a second that I've seen done. Um, but they shouldn't necessarily always be your first line of, okay, I have a solid backup. Um, and then of course people who, have, who do have a backup then don't test them, but that's a different issue. <laughs> So I have seen that many times where they're, they have, oh, I have a great backup. Okay, have you tested it? Never. Okay, then. Um, then you really don't have a backup, in my opinion, if you've never tested it. So um, One of the other things also with, with Couchbase that you can do that I've seen a lot of people um, do instead of using CB uh, backup and CB restore um, is doing LVM snapshots if you're on Linux using LVM. Uh, uh, because of the append-only file structure, um, you can actually do an LVM snapshot uh, for, for backups and restores on Couchbase, um, and it's, you're, you're, not gonna, uh, you're not gonna break anything by doing that. Is it the best option? Well, if you have a lot of disk space, and you, I mean, it, it, it could be an option, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, because of the append-only file structure, that it is, it is definitely an option. Um, that's only for 2.x and later. Um, anything with 1.8, um, or 1.81 or anything before that, it, it's, that's a different, uh, it does not have a pen-only file structure, so don't, don't try that if I, um, if I were you. Um, the other thing is, like some have seen some people do, is they'll use XDCR to a secondary cluster, um, and then uh, pause replication, and then do a backup of that cluster. So backing up of a distributed database is really difficult, um, especially getting, trying to get a point in time backup. Um, it's, things are always changing. Most times if people are using Couchbase, it's because it's, uh, they're doing uh, uh, thousands of operations a second or more, tens, hundreds of thousands. So with things changing that much, to get a consistent point in time backup is really difficult. Um, this is one way that I've seen people do it, uh, uh, which leads me to the next slide, is running XDCR and stopping that, that I mean basically questing that database and uh, uh, then doing something like CB restore or pardon me, CB backup uh, to, to get that um, point in time um, backup. Um, so again, again, so in, in for, the, for the overall strategy, again, it is that you have to figure out how long is your, is your backup and your restore gonna take. Um, depending on the size of your database, backups and restores may not even uh, be an option. Um, I, I've seen some where there's terabytes and terabytes and terabytes of data um, and the backups take uh, takes so long that it, it, it ends up not being a viable option and they have to look at something else. Um, but for most people, it is an option and you should definitely have backups. Um, I, I know I don't sleep at night unless I have backups of my own stuff on my computer, much less um, whether a data, any database that I manage. So uh, CB backup strategies, uh, uh, the most common one that people use is using CB backup uh, and uh, to your local file system. Uh, and that's uh, the, probably the easiest but it also consumes uh, server resources. It consumes uh, couch-based resources, it consumes CPU, um, it consumes, uh, even changes some of the memory allocations in memcached, um, and it also uses disk, obviously. Um, the, other, the other ones is people who attach a network file system to that same node, um, and this is done on a per node basis. That's the other key thing here. Um, you would have to do run CD backup on, CD backup on every single node. Um, and run it to a network file system. So you're at least not troubling at this point, um, you're not troubling the, the disk, local disk, but you're um, still using, consuming network resources and some of the other things. Um, one of the best, if you can have enough resources to do it, um, is to have an extra server and run multiple CB backups in parallel. 
uh, and do it over the network. Then you're really only uh, uh, pulling data off of um, those. Uh, uh, you, know, you said you require an extra server, and you run the pa parallels and back. I mean, the backups in parallel. But it really only requires network and disk resources. Um, it uses a little bit less uh, uh, the memory on the local box. It doesn't really use any CPU on the other on the local box, um, and uh, so it does not have as much of an impact on your um, uh, on your servers. So, and that's all I have. Remember to test your DR plan. So, questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So CV backup can do by node or by bucket. Um, if you really want to do it, um, you probably would do by node and by bucket at the same time. So, because what's going to happen is, is if you say backup this node, it's just going to go serially to to backup every bucket on that node. If you say if you give it specifically back up this node and this bucket, then it's not, then it's, you're gonna get a more consistent backup um, uh, uh, across all of the nodes if you're gonna time that. If, if you're gonna do it correctly, you wanna do it from that central server and say always back up this bucket and then spawn if you can, depending on how many nodes you have, a CB backup, if it's a small cluster, let's say you have four nodes, do four copies of CB backup and for this bucket and then however many buckets you have, do it how, I mean, Unfortunately, you end up having to write your own scripts for this. This is none of this is automated in Couchbase today. Um, please don't get me started on that. But uh, yeah. Yep. You would, yeah, I mean, if you just have yesterday's backup and, 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 the, and the whole cluster goes down in a fiery crash, is that what you're asking? <laughs> um, then you, you, would, you would lose with the data between there and whatever your last backup is. Now, there is an option with CB backup to do um, incrementals. Um, if you wanted to do a full and incrementals in between there, um, that came in in 3.0. Uh, that might be an option to do to run every couple hours so you have an incremental since that last full. Um, but again, it's going to be driven off what your what your RPO is. So it, it may be if if I mean you're going to have to make some sacrifices. Everyone likes to say that they can't lose data and they can't do this, but when when it comes down and it's been three days since you've been down and management is saying, okay, get the damn thing back up. You know what? I'm sorry, but you have that conversation um, if you haven't done it before. I, I, know, I know I've been there. I don't know about anybody you, but I've been in that situation um, where you have to have that conversation. And um, it's ugly, but um, that's what happens when you don't agree on that, on those numbers ahead of time and actually have the money to back them up. Yeah. That one? Yeah, I didn't want to read it. Okay. I did? I don't think so. No. Oh. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yep. I, I am very familiar with this use case. Okay. So what happens after that? The XPCR, is there a smart way to take down? Will there be a lot of overhead on the existing? Yeah, so the, the question is for everybody who couldn't hear it is um, if you have, let's say, some sort of network break, um, in this case between, like I said, China and the United States, in China the network goes out, oh, I mean, just randomly all of a sudden does. And uh, I'm very familiar with this use case. So the, what, how does XDCR react to this? And so XDCR um, in, ver in version 3, as long as you're in version 3, it, it knows where it has stopped. 
um, it actually has a, a, a with the revision IDs um, in there, it will know where it needs to catch up to. Um, that's why also there's a, in 3.0 was introduced the, uh, uh, um, what is it called? Well, the incremental backup, but also there's one other, um, damn it, what is it called? When you recover a node that's been out of the cluster, and anyway, I can't think of it. Anyways, um, but, but it, it, it will know. It, it will say, okay, you left off here, and we're now here. I will catch you up from here. Uh, is there going to be a flood of activity between then? Well, obviously, but it will know, and it will catch up to do that. Um, it, it, ha it, it knows where it, it left off and, and where it needs to catch up to. Um, the one thing you need to watch there with that, though, is, is that you're not, allowed, you're not allowed to replicate data out of China that is for China nationals over to any other place. So um, same with the EU. So that, that's a, a, China's a little more strict about it than the EU is, but that would be the other thing from past experience that you would need to watch for that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so the question is, is there a way to throttle XDCR traffic? Um, there's actually some of the settings, I think, that Dean showed in the last talk with the internal, uh, enable internal settings. There were some of the XDCR ones. Um, I don't know that that throttles it exactly. I, I'll give you my... Where, Yes. We're actually have a confusion because um, you mentioned that for backup, we need to back up on each node and restore on each node. Yes. And it looks like that in order to um, be able to react to faster, mm -hmm. the best way we need to maintain cluster replication using XDCR. And one of the earlier slides, you mentioned that it's not necessary to replicate everything. So we kind of select a certain bucket or certain data that we I said it's possible, but continue on, sorry. Yeah, I'm wondering how could we maintain an optimum filtration in order to be able to restore when bad things happen, whether it is that we cluster, replicate everything, or we have to combine that with backup node by node, which is to me very inconvenient if we have a lot of nodes. Yep. Yeah, it is, in, it is inconvenient to back up node by node. I mean, today that's the, the, the way, I mean, CB backup, either you're gonna have to run it, like I was saying, where it's on each individual node backing up to either local storage or remote storage, or you're gonna run it from a central server and go over the network to back it up to that, to that central server. Um, so when I was saying before about replication and there being options to, to replicate only some data in the cluster, I was just saying that that is an option. I wasn't saying that that's always the best option, but not all data, I was, what I was trying to get at is that um, you don't have to replicate every bucket that's there. You can pick and choose how you need to replicate things. Um, and some things, some things may need to be replicated with XDCR over, when I say replication now, I'm talking XDCR, but um, some things may need to be replicated to another data center and some things don't. Um, it depends on, on, the, on, the, on your data. So uh, un unfortunately, it is going to be a layered approach. Um, your best way is gonna be, if you have the time, money, and effort, um, is to have where you have XDCR and you have backups. Um, for that. It, it depends on, on the scenarios that you might possibly encounter um, to do that. Most common um, for the most resiliency, the most high availability and, and DR is to be able to have at least two data centers. You can have more than, than two, I mean, um, is to be doing XDCR between the two. Um, that'll get it so that if something goes wrong in here, but let's say something, some developer puts some code in and blows away a whole, I mean, 100,000 documents, how do you get that back? All of that has been replicated over. It's now the 100,000 ones are missing on this one too. You may have to go back to your backups and use something like CB transfer to get those documents back. Yep. Yes.
Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, you can you can do the dual rights. Um, obviously, the I mean, if you're they have the same object ID, they're going to end up. I mean, you're going to running into conflict resolution. Um, but if they're the if they're the dual same right, then that they're, they're going to be the same object anyways. So uh, uh, that w it won't it won't be a problem. But but people do end up doing dual rights, or they end up putting it into. Uh, I've seen people end up using something like Kafka to to. Um, uh, to uh, um, meant to manage that, so it, there's a couple other tools. I probably would, if if that's something you were going to do, I probably would have something else to manage that, um, unless you want to have your application do that. What do you What do you mean by uh, have a sand do that? Uh, I mean it's. Well, I mean, then at that point, you might as well be using XDCR. It's not going to be any faster to be using something like SRDF or, or I mean, I, don't, I haven't done SAN replication in many years. Last time I touched it was SRDF on EMC. So um, whatever the modern equivalent of that is in the past eight years, then uh, uh, I don't know that's going to be any faster than going to uh, using XDCR. And XDCR will certainly be cheaper. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unfortunately, today the SDKs are not uh, XDCR aware. It is it, 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 that would help dramatically if that were the case. Um, and I have tried to put that on the roadmap, and it is on the roadmap for later versions of SDKs um, to be able to be XDCR aware. That is a co very common request. Um, so, uh, but today they're they're not. You would have to do that manually in your own code um, to be XDCR aware. Yep. Uh, from what I know, it works quite well. I know you guys have had had some challenges with that. Um, I am very well aware of who you are, obviously. So, um, uh, uh, but most people, uh, it's depending on the versions. Older versions, it, it, it was there was some problems with that. Newer versions, um, I've seen less of a problem. I mean, one of our biggest customers has four clusters, each one with around 80 nodes uh, uh, in in all in AWS. Um, they're spread out, uh, that the 80 node cluster, that's all in one region across multiple, they're the same one that I was talking about before that lost an entire availability zone. Um, so, yeah, you wanna keep it in a region. If you're gonna cross regions, it definitely is XDCR. There's too much latency. Um, I mean, going wrong, Amazon does a great job at, at their latency. I don't know who they're peering with or, or how much money they're paying for it, but their, their latency in between regions is really good but it, it's still not good enough where I would want to run a cluster that crossed that. I would use XDCR. Any other questions? Yep. Yes, but what you can't do is, it's consistent, but it's not consistent to a point in time. You can't say, uh, kind of like, an, it, I hate making this comparison, but in Oracle with our man, you could say, I want to recover, recover to uh, the 6th of, of, of June at 9.26 p.m. At, in 33 seconds. You can't do that with, with, with CV Backup because of the, there's no, um, I guess some of the technology is probably there to do some of that, but it's not time-based is the problem. Um, it's it's revision-based. The same thing like with the XDCR, being able to catch up to something it's not time-based, so you wouldn't be able to say that there's a specific time. So you'd be able to get close, but you're not gonna be able to get be exact, is the problem. Oh, oh, wrap up, okay. I'm being told to, I'm, the, the, the hook is coming out and I'm told to be to leave, so. Um, yeah, download the 4.0 beta, um, play with that, give some feedback or everything. Um, it's training in a place near you. Um, there's also lots of meetups that we're starting, uh, uh, starting in a lot of the areas. Um, I'm hoping to do be doing one another in Seattle here shortly, since that's the area that I'm from. Um, but there's plenty around here and uh, all over the world at this point. So we actually have some really good people on that right now. Um, is there any questions? You're welcome to hit me up afterwards, um, and I'll give you my card. And if I don't.